Hi, welcome back to another video. In this one, I'm gonna share our exact agency creative testing process that we use to grow and scale our client accounts. Now we spend millions of pounds each year on Facebook advertising, and this is the testing process that we have put in place across all of the accounts that we work with. The purpose of this creative testing process is to take a lot of the guesswork out and actually have a system that we can follow time and time again that's repeatable and we know gets the same type of outcome. Now, of course, we're not going to get the same results for each client because there's different industries, different products, a million and one different factors. But we want to take the guesswork out of the testing process so that we know when we have all the other elements of a client account lined up correctly, we can execute on a system that will get creatives inside the account that can grow and scale. So I'm going to share our current testing process. This might change as we progress as a company, but right now, this is the process that we're taking for our clients. Okay, so the first step is going to be research. Okay, so now this is like the most important step, um, and I'll explain why in just a second. So when we're coming up with ad creatives, what we want is we want to have essentially messaging that communicates what the product does and why someone needs it. So it's really essential here that we are looking at research in several different ways. Now, research is a very broad kind of phrase, so I'm gonna define a little bit more about what we actually do to get that result. So first of all, we need to be looking at competitors, okay? This is pretty straightforward, things like Facebook Ad Library can do this and loads of different competitor research tools. You can also just search them up. You can have a look at you know the different industry uh, leaders. You can see what they're doing in terms of ads, what they're doing in terms of landing pages, and you know, all of that stuff. So that's fairly straightforward. You also want to be researching the brand itself. Okay, so I'm gonna say your brand, assuming that you're a, a, a brand owner, or it's gonna be your brand or your client's brand if you're an agency. This again is essential because you need to be looking at what your customers are saying, because it's okay to understand the brand, you might know your product better than anyone, but what are your customers saying about the brand? So I'm gonna put it here in brackets as customers. And what I mean by this is when you read reviews of the products, what are they actually saying? When you read reviews of your competitors, what are they saying? When you're looking at feedback, again, what does it say? So all different types of information, your know, comments on ads, you can, you can say a whole bunch of stuff. But you want to be getting an idea of, okay, what is the fundamentally your brand or your client's brand really all about and researching that as, as best as possible. Obviously, if it's your own brand, you're going to know it quite well. That's more for an agency. However, also what your customer is saying. And again, like I mentioned that and I won't go over it again, but it's very, very important. The other thing we want to do is look at the market. Now, what I mean by this is there's things like the stages of awareness and the market sophistication. And these are different levers that you want to be looking at to understand basically how well known is your solution in the marketplace? And therefore, how are you going to communicate that differently? Because if we take something that's highly competitive, let's take something like a skincare product or like a um, anti-aging skincare brand, that is something that has been done time and time again. So people have heard a lot of those claims. They've heard, okay, this is a product that can it rejuvenate my skin, that can you have anti-aging properties. And there's, it's not a new kind of claim in the marketplace. Now, when that was a fresh and new claim, it had a lot more pull and effect. But now there's so many brands that are claiming to offer anti-aging you know, face oils, face serums, et cetera, et cetera. That's no longer a new claim in the marketplace. So we have to elaborate on that claim. We have to essentially expand on that further and show why our product works. It's not just you know, as simple as now saying, we have an anti-aging phase oil. It's like, well, great. So there's like 50 other companies that I've seen ads for today. That isn't actually going to get the results. So this is where looking at the market research, I'll just put market research. Now, a great kind of resource that I would recommend you look at is a book called Breakthrough Advertising by Eugene Schwartz. There's a lot of great stuff in there. They talk about, uh, it talks about stages of, of awareness and uh, market sophistication. And he talked about specifically how to advertise when your brand is at the different stages. So you're highly saturated, everyone's heard all the claims versus no one's heard any of the claims in the brand name. All right, obviously the, the way you communicate is very, very different. So part two is going to be mapping out creative concepts. So what we wanna do is we wanna plan a few different ad creative concepts because what we're gonna do here is we're going to create essentially, let's say, three to four different ad concepts and they each can have variations in them. Now, what is a concept? A concept is a bucket with a specific idea and then there's gonna be some different variations that go inside that bucket. And we're gonna see which kind of category, which bucket performs the best. And then we're also going to see which individual versions of that concept perform the best. Now, what we will typically see is you know, if, if like we're testing, let's say four different variations for one concept or meta ads, 
you know, if three of them haven't worked, the fourth one's not going to work either. So it's not necessarily, and I'll, I'll talk about how we spend uh, and kind of allocate budget later, but it's not necessarily about us just, you know, testing every single variation to its fullest. It's us having multiple different options for each concept. Because if we just create one ad for one concept or one ad per concept and we do three different concepts, we've only got one opportunity for that to win. And that's not always going to be the case. So it is important that we have multiple variations of the same thing. So we map out our creative concepts. Uh, a really simple formula is just do three concepts. Just map it out with three, all right? If you're lost and you don't know where to start, just start with that. Now, part three is actually going to be creating them, okay? Uh, creation. And what you want is you want uh, three ads per concept. Again, uh, just a rough guideline. When you're getting your ads created, there is going to be a huge discrepancy depending again on the designing use, if this is done through another agency, if it's in-house, if it's you're outsourced, there's going to be some huge discrepancies between what you say you want and what gets delivered. And it's really important that when you're going through this, you are doing this in a way that it's going to be done correctly. Okay, so you need to have full control and you need to make sure that the, the, the messaging that you've put together is included in the final output. And I can't emphasize this enough because ultimately it's not going to work if you don't do that. Okay, so because here, see here we've got our three parts. So you need to have your ads created and they need to match the full process and the ideas that you came up with in phase two based on research from part one. All right. So what this would actually look like is let's say we've come up with a concept to showcase a specific client that says an anti-aging face serum. And let's say the mechanics of the product delivery is something that's different to everything else in the marketplace. So let's say all of the other products, you just literally put it on your face and, and rub in whatever it's done. Let's say this one, um, rather than it being like a serum, it's there's some special type of uh, mechanism of delivery for the product. Maybe it comes in um, like a capsule and you have to like melt it. Maybe something else happens. Maybe it's, you know, a uh, powder and you put some something on it and then it becomes like liquid. I've seen products like this and we've worked with brands that have products where the mechanism of delivery is different. So fundamentally the claims are the same, but it's like, it's gonna work in a different way because it's not just a, a serum. It's not just an oil, it's something completely different. So let's say that is what makes this brand unique, okay? We need to map out a concept that communicates how that product is different. And we need to communicate why the mechanism of action is gonna help them achieve their dream outcome, their desire, because they might say, okay, cool, this is a nice looking product and it's something different, but how is that helping me get the result I want? And how is that helping me get a better result than the previous products or the products I'm using right now? So we need to communicate the, the how, the mechanism, and we need to communicate how it actually benefits them, how that mechanism of action makes it more effective. And that ties into, well, it's obvious why these other products haven't had the result you're looking for, because they don't have this missing piece and that's what this product has and that's what's new and it, it gains traction. So we're introducing kind of new hope into why they would want to use one of these products because maybe they've heard all the claims that they're kind of sick and tired of it. So we need to introduce a new reason why they're going to take a punt on this product essentially. And also fundamentally, above all of this, you need to have a very, very good product. You'd have a superior product. If you don't, this is gonna be a very short time strategy that isn't ultimately gonna work very well. So let's assume you've got a great product, goes without saying, you've mapped up your creative concepts, three of them, you then get them created, three ads per concept. Now we need to look at testing. So the testing structure is going to be as follows. So firstly, you want to keep as many variables the same when testing. Now, this is super, super important. And this ties into how we actually run Facebook advertising and how we run advertising on any platform. What we're not going to do is test the ads in an unfair environment. And what I mean by that, let's say we're doing a ton of audience testing. Let's say we have like a retargeting campaign, a top of funnel campaign, maybe a link clicks traffic campaign. If we test the ad creatives, yeah, if we test them uh, unfairly, so we run one as like a retargeting ad maybe because that sometimes works. Then we create another one that's like going out on some link clicks. And then we test another one, you know, in another ad set that we have running that's like for engagement or for conversions. I mean, it goes without saying, but that would be very unfair because all of the other things are not the same. Another point as well to this is copy. If you have one standout copy that you're using, you don't want to test each of your three concepts with different ad copy because it wouldn't really make any sense. The only caveat to that is obviously if they're so different that they that the messaging would be lost with the same copy, there can sometimes be an argument as to why you would test the, the kind of main copy and another copy with it that's more bespoke. However, as a rule of thumb, if it's the creative that we're testing at the time, we will use it with the copy that we know is our best performer. And it just eliminates 
another variable. Again, landing pages, we're gonna keep all the variables the same, we're gonna send it to the same landing page. We're not gonna do anything different. We're also not gonna like radically change budgets. So it's not like we're gonna go from spending, let's say we're spending like, I don't know, 100 pounds a day or 200 pounds a day, and then we introduce all of these tests and we run them at like 500 pounds a day or 1,000 pounds a day. That's like, it's not a fair environment or the other way, you know, we, we're starting for like 50. It needs to be there or thereabouts. And by doing it there or thereabouts, it gives us a good um, indication of what is actually working well, okay? So we're just going to essentially test and keep as many variables the same as possible. Another couple of quick points as well is things like the audiences. So we wanna make sure that, I mean, when we're testing, we're using broad targeting, we're making sure that everything is the same because if we have different audiences, different interests with different creative concepts, the results are not really fair. So we wanna have everything simplified so we can have high confidence decisions. Um, when we choose to turn things off, we wanna know, yeah, we're, we're pretty happy that we've turned this off and we're not umming and ahhing as to whether it would have worked in a slightly different setup. So from there, we're going to look for definitive outcomes. Now, what I mean by that is we want to make sure that when we turn ads off, and I kind of touched on it a second ago, we turn them off for the right reasons and we have high confidence in that decision. So when we're, let's say we're testing three different ad concepts, it's going to be pretty clear that one of them is going to be like maybe a standout winner. One of them is going to maybe be like in the middle and one of them is probably not going to be working. Or maybe we have one working and two not. Maybe we have, you know, whatever, two working and, uh, and one not or, or two or one working and two not. So whichever kind of combination we have there, we're going to have one or two maybe working better. It's probably going to be at least one or two that are relatively performing worse than the others. So we've got our sort of mix of results. Now, what we can do from there is we can start to cut ads with inside each concept. So if we have a concept of the ad uh, set level, essentially, if we're using meta ads, we're going to start turning off specific creatives if they are going outside of KPIs. Now, if we have three variations of each concept, that gives us some flexibility because let's say one of them gets all the spend, but it's not really getting the right results. We can turn that one off and start seeing how the other two perform. Now I touched on this earlier, but if we do that, what we then typically see if the second creative also doesn't perform. So basically Meta will not spend equally. So you'll, you'll start getting a lot of spend through one creative typically. If that one also doesn't produce the results and we turn it off, the next one that gets spent, if that doesn't produce results, we typically won't then turn that off and let the third one spend its full, you know, full kind of budget because we're using a lot of capital on that point and we never really see those ones kick in. So if at that point, you know, if that's a two out of three get cut, I'd be happy that the concept is not a winner and we would move on. Then the creative concepts that are winning are getting a relatively high performance compared to the account average and compared to what's in the account at that time. We're going to do a few things. We're going to scale budgets and we're also going to create new variations of the same concepts. So we're going to learn from it. Let's say we have your concept one is a winner. We're going to spend more through it and we're going to create more variations of that winning concept and then say, okay, what concepts are similar to that one? Why did that one work? Can we create other ones that maybe have the same ideas behind them? Or was there like specific headlines and words used in there that we think could be really good? We can start to, to kind of learn from them and strategize around them to double down on our learnings. So fundamentally, that's a really simple breakdown of how we do our creative testing. There are some kind of nuances to it, of course, but fundamentally that is the bulk of how we do things. So I just want to kind of give you that as a, a formula. Hopefully that's something quite simple that you can follow along for your clients or for your own brand. Again, I'll make other videos as we update our processes, but this is currently the sort of uh, methodology and thought process that we're using behind it. So thanks very much for watching. If you want to work with my agency, there's a link in the description. Click the link, have a look at our video testimonials, have a look at our website, see what we do, and then click through, book a call, and we can schedule our time to see if what we do is a great fit for you. Thanks very much.